right now, 700 miles from any coastline, a nuclear-powered city carrying 6,000 souls is sailing through hostile waters. Two massive ships are racing side by side at 30 miles per hour, connected by fuel hoses pumping thousands of gallons per minute. One wrong move, one steering error of just one degree, and both vessels could explode in a fireball visible from space. This isn't a movie scene. This is how America's aircraft carriers get everything they need to survive at sea, and the dangers involved will shock you. The USS Gerald R. Ford, our nation's most advanced aircraft carrier, weighs 100,000 tons and costs $13 billion. But all that power means nothing if it can't get fuel, food, ammunition, and supplies while thousands of miles from home. What most people don't realize is that keeping these floating fortresses operational requires some of the most dangerous maneuvers ever attempted at sea. Every single day, brave American sailors risk their lives in operations so perilous that even experienced captains break into a cold sweat. We're talking about precision maneuvers where ships worth billions of dollars come within 30 yards of each other while racing through ocean swells, connected by cables that could snap at any moment. The stories you're about to hear have never been told in detail before. From Red Sea combat zones where enemy missiles target supply ships, to Arctic operations where one mistake means death in freezing waters. If you support our incredible Navy and want to learn the truth about these death-defying operations, let us know by commenting below. Let's start with something that will blow your mind. When the USS Harry Truman was deployed to the Red Sea for nine months in 2025, it faced the most intense combat any carrier strike group had seen since World War II. Houthi missiles and attack drones were constantly targeting the ship. But here's what nobody talks about. Right there alongside Truman, under the same enemy fire, was a supply ship called USNS Arctic with 140 civilian crew members. Think about that for a second. While fighter jets were launching combat missions and defensive systems were shooting down incoming missiles, Arctic was pumping aviation fuel and loading weapons onto Truman. The rear admiral in charge said something that should give every American chills. Since World War II, we've not seen at sea battles like this. The only way they could do it was based on Arctic being there alongside them. During that deployment, Arctic sailed 244,000 nautical miles. That's 10 times around the Earth. They delivered 124,000 pounds of ordnance and performed more than 135 underway replenishments, all while enemy forces were actively trying to sink them. But combat zones aren't the only place where these operations turn deadly. Even in peacetime, the physics involved are absolutely terrifying. Picture two of the largest moving objects ever built by mankind, each longer than three football fields, racing through the ocean at speeds that would make your car insurance company faint. The aircraft carrier weighs 100,000 tons. The supply ship weighs another 50,000 tons. They're moving at 12 to 16 knots. That's nearly 20 miles per hour for vessels this massive. Now here's where it gets scary. When two ships this large run side by side, the water between them creates a suction effect. It's like a giant invisible hand trying to slam them together. Naval engineers call it hydrodynamic interaction, but sailors have a simpler name for it, the kiss of death. At exactly 12 knots, if one ship's heading changes by just one degree, we're talking about the width of your thumb held at arm's length, that creates a lateral speed of 20 feet per minute. In other words, in three minutes, a tiny steering error could bring these floating cities close enough to touch. And when 150,000 tons of steel touches another 150,000 tons of steel at sea, the result isn't a gentle bump. It's an explosion that can be heard for miles. This actually happened in 2004 to the USS Lake Champlain. They were conducting a routine refueling when something went wrong. The crew had to perform what's called an emergency breakaway, basically ripping apart all the fuel lines and cables connecting the ships while they were still moving. Fuel sprayed everywhere. If even one spark had ignited that fuel, both ships and everyone aboard would have been vaporized. But here's what makes our Navy incredible. They've perfected these operations to the point where accidents like this are extremely rare. The level of skill, training, and courage required is beyond what most people can imagine. Detailed Operations 
So how exactly do they pull off these death-defying operations? It starts with something called the Standard Tensioned Replenishment Alongside Method, or STREAM. Don't let the technical name fool you. This is pure adrenaline-fueled precision. The supply ship, usually one of our incredible Henry J. Kaiser class or new John Lewis class replenishment oilers, establishes a steady course and speed. These aren't your average cargo ships. The newest John Lewis class oilers are 745 feet long and can carry 156,000 barrels of fuel. They're equipped with four massive gas turbines that let them keep pace with aircraft carriers traveling at over 30 knots. The carrier then approaches from behind and slightly to the side, coming within 30 yards of the supply ship. To put that in perspective, if you're standing on the deck of one ship, you could throw a baseball and hit someone on the other ship. Except these aren't stationary targets. They're both moving at highway speeds through ocean swells that can reach 20 feet high. Once the ships are in position, the supply ship fires what's called a shot line using a pneumatic launcher. This line carries heavier cables across the gap between ships. These cables, called high lines, are then connected to a revolutionary system with ram tensioners that automatically adjust for the movement of both ships. Before we dive deeper into the most dangerous part of these operations, please take a second to like this video and subscribe. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing. It costs you nothing, but makes a huge difference to us. Dangers and challenges. Now comes the part that would make even seasoned sailors nervous. Fuel hoses, some of them seven inches in diameter, are connected between the ships. These hoses can pump thousands of gallons per minute of highly explosive aviation fuel and diesel. We're talking about enough fuel to power a small city flowing through hoses suspended over churning ocean water. But fuel isn't the only thing being transferred. Ammunition, including guided missiles costing millions of dollars each, travels along these cables. Fresh water, food supplies, mail, and even ice cream for the crew, everything a floating city needs to survive, crosses that 30-yard gap of ocean. Weather makes everything exponentially more dangerous. High winds can snap cables like guitar strings. Heavy rainfall reduces visibility to near zero. Fog turns the operation into a deadly guessing game. Ocean currents and waves constantly try to push the ships apart or pull them together. During hurricane season, carriers have to completely abandon resupply operations and flee to safer waters. But in combat zones, they don't have that luxury. They have to get supplies no matter what Mother Nature throws at them. The crew members performing these operations need nerves of steel. On the aircraft carrier side, deck crews work with cables under extreme tension while fighter jets are launching and landing around them. One snapped cable could kill someone instantly or damage aircraft worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Human stories. Let me tell you about the heroes who make this possible. Take the crew of USNS Arctic during that Red Sea deployment. These weren't active duty Navy sailors. They were civilian mariners working for military sea lift command. While Houthi missiles were screaming overhead and defensive systems were firing constantly, these brave Americans kept working. They spent nine months under fire, delivering everything from aviation fuel to ice cream to our fighting forces. Nine crew members received Navy Civilian Service Achievement Medals for their courage. As one admiral put it, they go unnoticed. They don't have home ports. They come and go, sort of a commercial model, but it really makes a difference when you see what they do alongside our combative forces. The skill level required for these operations is incredible. Helmsmen must maintain course and speed with precision that would make a Formula One driver jealous. The bridge crew gives their undivided attention to navigation for hours at a time. One moment of distraction, one small error, and disaster strikes. Aircraft carriers always receive replenishment on their starboard side because the island's superstructure prevents port side operations. This means supply ships must approach from a specific angle every single time, reducing flexibility and increasing risk. Modern Technology and Innovation Our Navy has developed incredible technology to make these operations safer. Automated replenishment systems reduce the need for manual labor in the most dangerous areas. Advanced tracking software predicts exactly when ships will need supplies, optimizing storage, and reducing waste. Helicopters now supplement ship-to-ship -ship transfers through something called vertical replenishment, 
or Vertrep. MH-60S Seahawks can carry up to 4,000 pounds of cargo directly to a carrier's flight deck. This reduces some of the risk of connected replenishment, but it's not without its own dangers. Helicopter operations at sea, especially at night or in bad weather, are extremely hazardous. Landing a helicopter on a moving deck while the ship is conducting flight operations requires split-second timing and nerves of steel. The Navy is also developing unmanned systems for future resupply operations. In 2020, they successfully demonstrated resupplying a submarine using drones, a C-17 transport plane, an MH-60R helicopter, and a V-22 Osprey. This technology could revolutionize how carriers get supplies while reducing risk to human crews. Strategic importance. These dangerous operations aren't just impressive feats of seamanship, they're absolutely critical to American naval power. Without underway replenishment, our carriers would be limited to operating within a few hundred miles of friendly ports. That would essentially end America's ability to project power globally. The Ford-class carriers were designed with one promise, more combat power per day for less money over 50 years of service. But all that advanced technology means nothing without the brave men and women who risk their lives keeping these ships supplied. In an era where enemy nations are developing anti-ship missiles specifically designed to target aircraft carriers, the ability to stay at sea indefinitely becomes even more important. Our carriers can't hide in port. They have to stay mobile, stay operational, and stay supplied no matter what threats they face. China, for example, has recognized how critical these supply operations are to American naval power. They've specifically developed strategies to target our replenishment ships, knowing that cutting off supplies is easier than sinking a carrier directly. Future challenges. Looking ahead, these operations will only get more challenging. The Navy is developing new light replenishment oilers called TAOLs to support distributed maritime operations. These smaller, more agile ships will cost $453 million each, and the Navy plans to build 13 of them by 2029. Climate change is making ocean weather more unpredictable and severe. Operations that were routine 20 years ago now require careful planning around increasingly violent storms. Arctic operations, where one mistake means death in freezing water, are becoming more common as global tensions increase. Enemy nations are developing new weapons specifically designed to disrupt these supply operations. Cyber attacks could disable navigation systems during critical moments. Submarine threats force supply ships to take longer, more dangerous routes. Even terrorist groups now understand that targeting logistics ships could cripple entire carrier strike groups. Conclusion The next time you see news footage of an American aircraft carrier projecting power somewhere around the globe, Remember the incredible danger and skill required to keep that ship operational. Behind every combat mission, every show of force, every humanitarian operation, there are brave Americans performing some of the most dangerous maneuvers ever attempted at sea. These men and women, both military and civilian, risk their lives daily to maintain America's naval supremacy. They deserve our respect, our support, and our recognition for the incredible job they do in conditions most of us can't even imagine. If this opened your eyes to the hidden dangers our Navy faces every day, hit that like button and subscribe for more stories about the heroes who keep America safe on the world's oceans.